love that song. It really simply the truth is that he is with us today. And if there's a cry of our heart as a church, as a parent to my children, to a, as pastors of a church, and even to my own life, it'd be the awareness of the closeness of God. And today, that's our desire for you. It's challenging sometimes through screens, but God is bigger than you think he is. He's more powerful than you known him to be. And God, even now, wants to reach through uh, screens and just comfort you, encourage you, and be aware of his presence. And I know today in person, I can speak for myself, I feel his presence today. So, God, we just thank you. Thank you that you're here. In Jesus' name, amen. You can grab a seat here in person. So good having a live audience uh, here. I feel like uh, an 80s sitcom uh, filmed in front of a live studio audience. But this is not Cheers. This is not Happy Days. And I've just dated myself there. This is not Full House. This is not Whose Line Is It Anyway. Uh, this is Church. And uh, we're really glad. Thank you so much, Dan. We're so glad you're here today and you've joined us for this service. Um, again, so good having people in person today. It makes all the difference, not just to us preachers, but just to uh, the presence in the room. Are you good at home today? We hope you're good. We love you. We're so glad you're here, part of our online campus. Uh, you've joined us today, uh, wherever you are, around the world, uh, those in Halifax that um, part of our church that usually meet in person, we're really, really glad you're here today. We started a series um, last week called God in My DMs. We're going to continue that today. And we're excited about that. But as was announced earlier, in case you missed it, we are back in person next Sunday morning. Hope you're excited. There's something about being in the room. And yes, we'll keep live streaming uh, at 1130, but we're in person next week at 10 and 1130. You don't need to register for that. Um, and we'll send a lot of announcements out this week of what you need to know. But would you help us with this? We're going to be posting about that uh, today at some point. Uh, would you share that on whatever platform you're comfortable with, whether it be by text to friends or Facebook or Instagram, um, Twitter users, where you at? Uh, but would you just share that? Get the word out to our church uh, and to our community that we're back in person, and we would love to see you there next Sunday morning. God in my DMs. God in my direct message, learning how to hear the voice of God. If there is one prayer we have as parents for our kids, it's not that they would make great money, though uh, our retirement depends on them doing so. Josh and Maddie feel the pressure. Uh, it's not that, um, that they would just, um, that they would marry the right person, though that is the biggest decision outside of your faith that you can make. We, our greatest prayer is they would hear God's voice because if they know the voice of God, they will marry the right people. They will go in the right direction vocationally, relationally, emotionally, spiritually. And our prayer for you, church, is not that you would simply follow a couple or a ministry team. It's not that you would just tune in or attend in person. It's that you would become very close and very familiar with the voice of God for your life. God in your direct messages. It's funny, I came across a post last week, randomly showed up on my feed, of Matt Lido in 2016 trying to get into my DMs on Instagram. Uh, he, he commented on one of my posts on Instagram going, hey, we, you don't know me, but I'm in town for work. Uh, and he, and this, is what, this was his opening line, trying to get a connection. He's like, hey, you know any good coffee shops in the city? And then I followed up with recommending one, and then he was like, if you got time to meet, uh, I'd love to connect. And just, I met you once, I'd like to connect. And I'm so thankful that he slid into the DMs. Do you remember that? You were in town for work, and I was, I was away preaching at that time in another province, another part of the world, and, uh, but now he's a part of our life. You never know what can happen when someone wants to connect with you, and uh, we are blessed because of him and his family. God wants to connect with you today. If you have a Bible, would you open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I'm going to read it uh, from the ESV version. It says, call to me, and I will answer you. Stop right there. There is, there is a command and a promise. And everybody wants to talk about the promises of God, but every promise is tied to a command. You want a long life? Honor your parents. Come on. You want to find God? You've got to seek him. If you want to hear from God, you've got to call out to God. I don't got time today, but I could stop right there. For every promise, there's a command. And today, God has so many promises for us as a church. But it starts with a command. Call to me, and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Doesn't say Google, 
He doesn't say, he doesn't say ask a friend. He says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Today I want to pray as we start week two of this series, which I believe is probably to this date the most important series that we've ever done as a church. Now it's interesting that we've battled technical issues where we're online only. There's a lot of opposition, but I believe this is one of the most important series we've ever done because it points us more clear than anything else back into relationship with Jesus. So can we pray today as we launch today? Father, thank you for those that are tuning in. I'm so thankful for our production team. So thankful for what they navigate. Thankful for our worship team. Thankful for our church. Thank you for our guests and our community. Today, we ask for your voice to speak. Even as I'm sharing today, God, would you highlight things? Would you, would you uh, bring revelation to other things? Would you uh, put things in people's hearts? Would you speak to them clearly today? God, we want to hear you and love you and know you. Father, thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Let me ask you a question today. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Um, I get this question once in a while when I'm doing conferences or workshops, and I like to ask this question, especially to those that are older, that have been around a little bit. I'm like, okay, of all your living, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Uh, I go back often to this one thing my youth pastor told me growing up, and I'll say it the only way he could say it. He said, Brother Mike, there's, there's two groups of people that will never listen to you. And I remember being a young leader, 18, 19, 20, hearing this, just soaking this in. He said, Brother Mike, there's two people that you can never get through to. No one you can get to. Someone who's in, who thinks they're in love and someone who thinks they've heard from God. And in my years, I re- remember that, and it is so often true. People that think they're in love, they're not asking for your advice, they're not asking for your opinion. Come on, some of your parents know what I'm talking about. Some, maybe some of your young adults, your teenagers, some of you look back, it's just sometimes when people just get blinded by, by endorphins and hormones and dolphins and whatever else is going on. I'm not sure what the poipus is of that, but they thank you so much today. But when people are with the emotion of love, and love is emotion, it's also a choice, but people in love, when they're caught up in their feelings, there is um, reason goes out the window. The other group is someone who thinks they've heard from God. Because when you put God's name on something, uh, right away, you void any chance of anyone questioning you. That's why even as leaders, we're very careful to say God said. Uh, usually if God gives us a word for someone, or if we want to speak to someone, give some advice, we say we feel like God is saying, because so many times people use God's name in vain. They put God's name on their opinion, on their choice, on their, their attraction or their want, because they don't want anybody to question it. Got to be careful when we say God says. I remember growing up, there was a friend I grew up with, when, and uh, as a teenager, he told me and he told everybody else, he's like, see that girl there? And he said her name. He goes, God told me I'm going to marry her. And he told him, I was like, I don't know if you should say that. We were like 19. I'm like, I don't know if you should say that. But he started telling me and everybody else, and uh, it got back to this girl. I remember, never forget what she said. She goes, well, I hope God tells me uh, because I'm a very important part of this. Um, they ended up not getting married. He married someone else, but... It's amazing how he got excited. He was both in love or infatuation. Notice I didn't say infatuation, infatuation. Um, But also he thought he heard from God. But we have to be careful when we say God says. Using God's name in vain puts God's name on it and makes it unchallengeable. But I do know this, God is speaking. God does want to speak to us. So how do you know how God speaks? Last week uh, we talked about in Psalm 37 verse 23. It's interesting, David wrote this as an old man, and he had seen some things. He'd been around the block a little bit. He, and he says this in verse 23. He says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will not fall. The Lord holds them by the hand. And then I got to keep reading because it's so good. It says, once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Verse 23, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. Last week we talked about this very important uh, truth is that God wants to speak to you. If you're not hearing God speak, it's because you're either not godly or you're not listening. If you're not godly, God wants to rush in and just overwhelm you with his grace and love today. But if you've accepted Jesus, if you're following Jesus, if you're trying your best to live his way and you're, you're living a life following Jesus, the question is, 
Do you know God's voice? Today, we want to speak into this and part two of this, of this series, God in Your DM. If you're writing down notes today, I encourage you to write down notes. Maybe rewatch this, this, this video cast, but this title, uh, How God Speaks. Last week, it was God Wants to Speak to You. This week, How God Speaks. I want to share, this is not an exhaustive list. This is the way God has spoken to me personally and to many others. There's, there's more ways than this, but I want to list a couple today to help us know. If we're honest today, transition isn't something just 18-year-olds leaving high school, going to university. Transition is something, is history of life. In this room, everyone in this room is going through some form of transition, whether it is with young kids or you're transitioning into young adults or you're transitioning into maybe buying houses or into relationships or maybe you're entering empty nest or maybe you're transitioning your parents into long-term care. Someone's always transitioning into another area of life. We need to hear God. In this season where culture has never been more uncertain, economy has never been more uncertain, health has never been more uncertain, restrictions and freedoms have never been more uncertain, stability things, whether it be shopping, malls, entertainment, whatever it is, has never been more uncertain, we need to know that we can hear from God. God wants to speak to you. How does God speak? Here's some of the ways that God speaks. First one I want to talk about is through his word through his word. Now, you, now, if you've been around for a while, you knew that was coming. Yeah. It's no secret, but I've learned this. Just because it's basic doesn't mean it's not true. Right. Gravity is basic, but it is true. Yeah. Breathing is basic, but if you don't do it, uh, you're not in a good spot. But the truth is God speaks through his word. He speaks through the Bible. The more you know his word, the more you'll recognize his voice. Think about that. The more you read his word, the more you're going to be able to recognize his voice. Do you, am I the only one that you read people's text through their voice? <laughs> like when people text you, I, 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 I hear their voice. When Brad, our director of production, production when he texts me, I read it really fast. <laughs> and I hear his tone and I picture him doing a hundred things while he's texting me. And when, when I, I just know, I know, am I the only one? Am I the only one that doesn't know? Okay, we do that. The more you know his word, the more you'll recognize his voice. A couple years ago, we, I did an April Fool's prank on my wife to get her back for an amazing prank her and my son did where they stole my car, and I fell for it. I thought someone stole our car from our driveway, and my, I think he was like seven at the time, or it was his idea, and he pulled it off. It was a brilliant, and my wife went along with it as the betrayer that she is and uh, wasn't the first rib to let, let me, come on, and... And uh, I had a rib problem, and uh, her and my son teamed up. It was brilliant. So the next year, I decided this prank, and I, I don't recommend you doing this, but I took her phone, and I changed out her best friend's contact information for my own. And then, so when I texted her, she thought it was her best friend. And on April Fool's, I pretended I was in the shower, I was in the bathroom, texting her as her friend. On her phone, was coming up her friend, and I let her know with great sadness that, that her, this her best friend and her family, we're moving away. That job promotion came up, and they're moving away. And, and Nancy's reading this, and she's emotional, and she's banging on the door. Mike, you'll never believe what's happening. And I'm in the shower, and, but I'm not in the shower, and I'm texting. And, and she's like, I can't believe this. And she was upset. And she's like, I'm going to call you right now. And I'm replying as her friend. No, don't call me. I'm too emotional right now. Give me a... And I'm just, I'm, I'm just wrecking with her heart. But I knew I couldn't keep going with it by text. Why? Because I knew eventually, because they had texted so much, they had talked so much, they had hung out so much, that my vocabulary, my tone, and my direction would give myself away. You ever have someone, like our kids once in a while will take our phone and, and text me as Nancy, and, and like, you know, they, they ask for something, like, can I go do this? And then, like, hey, I'm letting Matt at you, or Josh, and I'm like, no, that's not Nancy texting me right now. Someone has her phone. Why? Because the more I'm with her, the more I know her voice. The more I know her voice, the more I know her words. The more I know her words, the more I know her voice. When we read this, church, when we, when we study this, when we, when we literally live through this, the more you know his word, the more you'll easily recognize his voice. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. It's not fake news. Right. What is true? Right. There's no spin on the Bible. Right. This isn't Fox. This isn't CNN. On, this isn't uh, uh, right or left. It's truth. Yeah. It says, teach us what is true to make us realize what is wrong with our lives. Isn't that so positive? Yeah. Yeah. It's a mirror. But I like this. It says it corrects us. 
I have that highlighted. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us to do what is right. God uses the word to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. The life that you have called, God's called you to, your purpose and plan is good work. I don't know if you feel good today. How are you feeling? Feel good. You are called to do a good work, and his word corrects us. It teaches us to write. It says it equips and prepares us to do the good work on our lives. That's what his word does. God's word has God's power. We're in a season as a team, and even individually, me and Nancy, we've been calling up for God's power. After this series, we're going to go into a series of prayer. After that, we're going to go into a series on the spiritual gifts. And we believe that God's power, we're believing for miracle moments in our services, in our small groups. Come on, in your home, in my home. But God's word has God's power. Let me prove it to you. We're not going to look it up today, but in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is led by the Spirit out into the desert. Now, if it was me, I would have dropped an S and called it dessert, but, or added an S or whatever I've got to do there. But it's interesting. Some of you are, feel like you're in a desert time, and maybe it wasn't sin. Maybe it wasn't just a dry season. Maybe God's calling you to a place to focus you in on what he has for you. But it says the Spirit led Jesus into the desert, and as he, at one point he started fighting Satan. And when he fought Satan, he didn't fight him, saying, God, I need you to speak to me. What did he combat him with? Well, how did he defeat the enemy of his soul? How did he combat the very temptation and aggression of the enemy? By quoting God's word. He keeps saying, it is written. Well, you need to know this today. God's power is in God's word. You need to hear from God today. You need to read his word. The more familiar you are with his word, the more familiar you are with his voice. When we read the Holy Spirit, We'll have passages. When I read his scripture, the Holy Spirit will work in our lives. See, if you know the author, it's easier to read the book. And the Holy Spirit will start to have passages jump out at us. It'll jump out at me. It'll encourage me, direct me, challenge me, correct me, and shape my life. That's why you can read the Bible the same passage a um, hundred different times. You'll go through the Bible going, I didn't see that before. You might have read it before, but you didn't see it before. You might have seen it, but you didn't see it. You know there's a difference? You ever see somebody all the time, and then one day you look at them and go, man, they have grown. You know, you see the kids, and man, I've seen you, but I haven't seen you. And you can read it, but you haven't read it. And the Spirit of God will enlighten it. This happens. Happens every day for me. Happens uh, all the time. Sometimes it's hard reading this book. Sometimes it's dry. Sometimes it's like, man, it feels like a task. But I'm telling you, if you open your heart and God wants to speak to you, all of a sudden you'll be reading, and all of a sudden something will jump out at you and go, oh, I need that right now. And sometimes it's a simple thing to make you hold on to your convictions or hold on to your truth, or maybe it's a correction, or maybe it's a, it's a direction, but you need to know that the Holy Spirit speaks through the passages of Scripture. If you're struggling to hear God's voice today, if you're a new believer, maybe you've been around for a while and you know church, but you say, I don't know if I know God's voice. I need him to direct me. If you're struggling to hear God's voice, the foundation is regular reading of his word. Reading his word grows your familiarity with God's personality, God's character, his values and ways. It's the foundation, please don't miss this, to test all the other ways God speaks. It's the foundation. Everything else comes back to, does that line up with God's word? The more you know his voice, the more, the more you know his word, the more you'll recognize his voice. Second way God speaks to me and speaks to many people and not just me. I want to make it very clear. I don't have this thing where I feel like God speaks to me every day. I struggle with this. This is for me as much as it's for you. Do not think that I am just this leader that has this download from God and I hear from God. In this season, I'm like, God, speak to me. And sometimes I struggle through my frustration. I can't hear God. Uh, a leader texts me and go, hey, do you feel like this is a spiritual battle right now as a church? And I said, I don't know if uh, I can clearly hear through the frustration in my heart. I deal with this. You deal with this. We need to hear from God. How else do I hear, we hear from God? Through his spirit. Through his spirit. John 14, 26. But when the Father sends an advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything. Teach you everything. I love that. Not teach you some things. Teach you everything. And he will remind you of everything I've told you. I love that. It says the Holy Spirit will teach you everything you need to know and remind you of everything that you should know. He'll teach you. Uh, you think, well, where in the Bible does it speak about how to deal with my kids and the Internet? How does it deal? Where in Scripture does it show me to deal with, with, with vaccines and pandemics and restrictions? Listen, what I love is the word of God is consistent, speaks to our life. But the Holy Spirit will speak to your life today. Well, maybe you don't, you don't know what you need to know. 
but he'll also more often than not remind you of what you need to know. And I have learned in my life, I need more reminding than I need more teaching. Gosh, if I could just remember half the things I've learned, if I would just do what I already know to do, but God will remind you. Holy Spirit often speaks through promptings, impressions in your heart. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us, sometimes, and as you learn to hear God's voice, it'll become a, 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 a prompting or something in your mind or a thought. And at first, you think, that's just me. And as you start to know God's voice, you start to discern it and fine-tune it. You think, no, that's not me, because I, I, that, that person wasn't on my mind. That, to do that, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it. I'll be driving sometimes, and people will come to my mind, and I'll think, I need to call them. And more times than not, I'll call somebody, text somebody, and you can tell on the other side, not always, but most times, it's like, this was timely. I I needed to hear from you. Sometimes it's just a voice message. Hey, I was thinking about you today. Listen, we get sensitive to the promptings and the impressions on your heart. A few years ago, I was getting ready uh, for a full day of work and of meetings as a pastor. And I I tell this story often, but I go back to the impressions of speaking of the Holy Spirit and I was shaving one morning, getting ready for work, and as I was shaving, my mind wasn't thinking about anything, just thinking about the day ahead of me. And all of a sudden, this one face came to my mind as I, sh- as I was shaving of this person I was meeting with that day. I knew I had to meet this person at a certain time, and, and uh, this person's face came to my mind, and I just started praying for that meeting. And as I did, I felt like the specific prompting that this person was struggling with guilt and shame over a decision they had made years before. I had no thought before that. I wasn't leaning that way. It was out of the blue. I remember shaving going, is that just an imagination? But I remember my heart was towards this person. My heart was thinking about God's plan for their life. And and just in a randomness, this was dropped in my heart. I'll never forget, I went to work that day and uh, trying to learn to hear the voice of God. I remember thinking, it's pretty specific and it's pretty serious. I don't want to just blurt that out and cause insecurity and I need to be protect someone's mind and you never just want to say I think God said and put you got to be got to be very careful the more you know the more restraint you need to handle and I thought I don't know if that's just me because I have a vivid imagination and I don't know if that's me or that's God so I remember I wrote it on a sticky note and put it on the coffee table all day just upside down on my coffee table went through meetings and this person came in and sat with me and had this meeting it was a great meeting and we went through the meeting and Then we prayed, and they were leaving this counseling session. As they were leaving, I remember thinking, okay, I guess that was just me. I need to fine-tune and learn God more, and I'm working on this. And as they got to the door, they stopped and turned around, and they said, actually, I wasn't going to say this today. I don't know why, but I had this weight on me and this shame on me. I need to tell you something that happened to me years ago. And they sat down, and all of a sudden, as they were talking, I just looked them in the eye and flipped it over and laid it there. I didn't say anything. And they finished talking, and I just held it up, the word and the situation. And this person, just all of a sudden, tears started coming to their eyes. And we had a moment where God could just speak to their wholeness and their healing and grace. And I remember thinking, the power of that moment, that person knew I loved them, knew that God had a call in their life, but the confirmation that God knows and God cares. I remember thinking, God, how much powerful was that moment because you spoke to me. God wants to speak to you. Listen, see, God the Father had the plan. Jesus was his plan. But the Holy Spirit helps us follow the plan. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you today. Parents, I've had to get through your teenagers. You feel like you're button heads. You feel like my personalities are so similar. We're, we're enneagrams and we're this and we're that. And you're thinking, I don't even, God wants to give you the language to cut through. He wants to give you uh, um, uh, women. He wants to give you direction when you're leading your business of which way to invest or hire. Guys, he wants to help you as a father and as a husband. He wants to help us as leaders. And we want God to speak to us. We believe he can direct us for what we need to know, but also remind us of what we've already learned. The Holy Spirit will speak to us through promptings. Another way God speaks is through his people. He speaks through his word, he speaks through his spirit, but he also speaks through people. People are the best, aren't they? And people are the worst, aren't they? (laughs) You were waiting for that one, weren't you? The best thing in your life and the most challenging thing in your life right now has a face attached to it. I promise you. It's not the roof that needs to be replaced. It's not the furnace that's ready to go. It's not the brakes on your car. The most challenging thing in your life has a face attached to it. You need to know this. I think it's fascinating that God chooses to use people, broken, messed up people. It says more about God than the people that he uses. People think, well, God spoke to, man, we elevate people that hear from God. It says more about God, willing to use imperfect, messed up people. That's why don't, 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 don't take it too hard when people that 
have heard from God. People say, well, that person had a moral failure, or that person did this, and i got to throw it. Everything they've ever said, every book they've ever written, every song they've ever written. Go, No, 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 no. Imper- God uses imperfect people. It's not so much about them. It says more about him, that he's willing to use us. I'm so thankful. Are you thankful today that God uses imperfect, messed up people? I know I am. God uses people. How does God use people? He uses, believe it or not, he uses sermons. That's one way. That's why we have church, not just because I feel like I need an audience to get some things off my chest. I believe that God, through me and, and, and other preachers and other churches and our, and our team, that God speaks through sermons, that God wants to unpack, use people to unpack his word and relate it to our life. We believe when we get up here, whether it be online or in person or whatever church you go to, whatever way, God wants to unpack his scripture using people. That's why I grew up taking notes in church, not to brownie points, to suck up to the pastor, to show that I'm all in because I realized that when I sat down in that moment, it was the only time during my week that I was gonna, someone else was going to pack my lunch for me because during the week I got to pack my own lunch for God. I was going to sit down and someone had prayed and researched and listened to God and there might be something, not everything, but maybe a nugget a truth here or there that would relate to the situation I'm in that I could take to the bank that God you've spoken to me let's go God speaks through sermons he speaks through other people God also speaks through mentors people who believe in your development mentors in your life people that are usually older than you been through some stuff thankful for business mentors thankful for parenting mentors I'm thankful for small groups starting uh, even this week and then we have classes for alpha for marriage and it's not for bad marriages, it's for marriages. You have a great marriage, Alpha's for you. You have a good marriage, it's for you. You have a marriage that needs a lot of work, it's for you. We have classes with mentors talking about finances, how to budget, how to save, how to organize your finances. I'm thankful for mentors and spiritual things. But you need to know that God speaks through mentors. People that aren't competing with you, mentors don't compete with you. Mentors aren't insecure by your success. Mentors want you to go higher than they've gone. That's why my parents, that's why you go to your parents for advice, and money. Why? Because they, they, don't, they don't compete. True fathers don't compete with sons. True mothers don't compete with their daughters. In fact, my parents would say, and they're here today, they would say, Mike, I want you to have a better marriage than we have. I want you to have a better house than we have. We want you to have better finances than we have. We want you to have a longer, why? Because they believe in you. And God will speak through mentors in your life that will text you and call you and spend time with you. And if we're humble enough to listen, God will speak through people and mentors in your life. God will speak through the Holy Spirit on other people. God will give people knowledge and, and, and thoughts and direction, and people will come up to you. Even this last week, I had some, one of our team even just speak in a prayer time in our prayer room and talked about God, uh, how he is ascending on this area and how we need his presence, and God will speak through his Holy Spirit on others. God speaks through others. The Bible records many times in which God used one individual to speak and deliver a message to another individual. You need to know this. God will speak to someone for you. Because sometimes we can't hear. We're too busy. We're too distracted. And God will give a message to somebody to give it to you. We see it in scripture. I'm not going to get into it too much today, but in Acts chapter 9, you have a guy named Saul who had a radical conversion who will soon change his name to Paul. It says in Acts 9 verse 10, it says there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord spoke to him in a vision saying, Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. Verse 11, go over to this street, to the house of Judas. And when you get there, ask for a man named Saul. He is praying to me right now. And I've shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming and laying hands on him so he can see again. Verse 17, so Ananias went and found Saul, laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scale fell off of Saul's eyes. He regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. You need to know this today. That's why it, we believe in community, that God can speak to one person to you. You know what's interesting with sermons, with mentors, and with others? It all happens in church. God speaks through the local church. He does. And local church is not an online service or an in-person service. It's a community. God speaks through the church. That's why we value the church as parents. We value in our marriage. When our kids grow up, we're not stop church. Why? Because there's a community. It's not only do we pour out and help others, but God speaks through his church. How else does God speak? God speaks through open and closed doors. Open and closed doors. Through circumstances. God will actually speak through open and closed doors. Revelation 3.8. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, but you obeyed my word and did not deny me. That should be a theme verse for this season of my life right now. Don't have a lot of strength, 
But I know this, God will open a door that no one can close because we have obeyed his word and do not deny him. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. For a wide and effective door has opened to me. Yo, there is many adversaries. Colossians 4, 3. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ. You need to know that. Today. God, for me, I've seen this many times. God will work through open and closed doors. 2015, me and my family were asking direction for our life of where to go next in our life and ministry and, and as a family. And I, I'll never forget this opportunity came where a church in New York City uh, asked us if we would consider coming on staff to help their young adult ministry, which is significant in its own, go into local universities, New York University and other colleges in Brooklyn and Queens and Harlem. And they said, can, we, can you help us take our ministry for, for students uh, from just young adults into actual colleges. You need to know this. If you know this about me, I love New York City. Like, I love New York City. I love the culture. I love the experience. And I'll never forget, me and my wife flew in for these interviews and these meetings, and we flew in, and they picked us up in a, in a, in a special car, and we're driving, and I'm playing through my mind. This could be our drive to work, and this could be our city, and there was a lot of emotions in that. And I remember we preached at this breathtaking church, and we interviewed with this, these breathtaking leaders, and I remember there was excitement and nervousness. And then at the same time, it was our anniversary. Remember this? We were walking through the streets of New York on our anniversary. And I was overwhelmed with grief and also missing home. And here's a, a dream would be to move to New York. And now in that moment, confronted with the possibility to live in New York City and work for breathtaking ministry and see God do things, all of a sudden I felt this tear to go back home. And it was our anniversary. I'll never forget it. Walking by Madison Square Garden and the New York Rangers fans were flooding the streets. The game just got out and there's blue jerseys everywhere. And I'm crying my face off. Remember this? And you were leading me by the hand, like just like a little, like a toddler. I'm just walking through the streets crying. And she's leading me going, let's go find coffee. You'll be all right. And I remember this. And I remember I couldn't get clarity from mentors. Because mentors are like, well, you know, that sounds like God, but there could be something else for God, and only you can know. And mentors could only take me so far. Prayer only took me so far. Scripture could only take me so far. I was looking for God's will. I was trying to find his calling, and I found I was at this place, and I felt this impression from God. I said, Mike, don't worry about it. I will close the door, or I will open the door. I remember sharing that with Nancy, and I had gone to mentors, and I had been in prayer, and I would read his word, and I felt this assurance. God goes, don't worry. I want my will for your life more than you do. Remember, we prayed this, and we said, okay, God, we're going to keep walking down this hallway until you close that door. But if you don't close it, we're going to walk through it. Yeah. The next three months, that door was open. We worked on immig immigration. We started working on human resources and getting to the country and plans. And we were talking about selling our house and navigating school systems for our kids, and we are navigating all this. And we are making plans, and we are doing um, assessments with the staff, and all this was building. And I said, God, the door's open, and we just kept walking towards it, walking towards it. And i never forget, I, I, it was in January of the year, December of the year, got a call saying, Mike, this doesn't make sense, but we just feel like that door needs to close. This is not the right time. I remember I hung up from that phone call, and a relief came over me, and this weight came off of me, and this peace hit me, and the door closed. And it was that January God spoke to us to start planting Nova. Can I encourage you? God will close doors. See, here's the problem. God, sometimes God closes doors, and some of us go kick in a window because you want it. You're like, I want it. I want this. And God, you close the door. That wasn't you, God. That was the enemy. And we start looking for a door or a fire escape. We start cutting through the roof. Listen, God sometimes works through open and closed doors. How do you know if an open door is from God? Number one, it never contradicts Scripture. If you feel like someone is hitting on you at work, sir, you think it's an open door to cheat on your wife? That contradicts scripture. That is not an open door. That is an enemy. That is an enemy of your soul. That is from the pit of hell. That is not a door. That is a distraction. That is not an opportunity. That is a landmine. Number one, it never contradicts scripture. Number two, confirmation is often received from mentors, friends, your spouse, and in prayer. I'll tell you, when we had that door closed, confirmation confirmation from others and confirmation from his spirit, confirmation of peace and confirmation from my spouse and each other. And third, it requires total dependence on God. Yeah. That an open door is not the easy way. It's like if you're going to walk through this door or if you're going to have a door closed, you know it has to be reliant on God. It was an opportunity. We thought, at least give us some direction. Okay, we got something we can go to. That door closed and we thought, we have nothing. Right. And we had to rely on God. We knew it was a closed door from God. Well, how else does God speak? I'm going to get through this quick today, but this is good. This is important. God speaks through dreams. God speaks through dreams. 
Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You need to know this, that God spoke much of history and, and a lot of his word through, to people through dreams. We don't talk about dreams a lot. We, we make fun of dreams. Well, I had a pizza dream. If you're on the East Coast, we had a Donair dream. You know, we don't, we, 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 not all dreams are from God, but I do know this. God can speak through dreams. In the Old Testament, Joseph of the Old Testament, God spoke to him in a dream about his future of greatness and leading. He not only spoke to Joseph in a dream, but he interpreted others' dreams, and it led him to be number two in command of the greatest nation of that time. God speaks through dreams. Solomon, he was actually given the gift of wisdom to become the wisest man of all time to make life-changing decisions through a dream. And it always fascinates me, even Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, that he received instruction to take Mary as his wife in a dream and call the baby Jesus. Yeah. Don't know if you know this, but Jesus was, was named in a dream. The angel in a dream said to Joseph, that's the first time his name is mentioned as Jesus. Isn't it interesting? He didn't use angels in the sky. He didn't write through the clouds. He actually, in a dream, Joseph could have walk, woken up and said, I had a bad kebab. That was, what was that, you know? But God, an angel in his dream the most powerful name in all eternity was spoken in a dream. That's why sleep is so valuable. And sometimes maybe you'll get an impression. You're, I think God speaks to me in dreams because I don't shut up when I'm awake. My mind's so busy. Sometimes God says, you know what? You just need to rest so I can get through all the noise and clutter and distraction. God speaks through dreams. He speaks through dreams. He also gave Joseph, the father of Jesus, another dream. He says, time to leave. Because someone's the king's trying to come kill Jesus and go to Egypt and flee. Isn't it interesting? He didn't send a prophet. He didn't send a wise man. He didn't send a, a messenger pigeon or an angel or a shepherd full of the Holy Spirit. He, in a dream, said the, the very uh, imp most important life ever to be born, all man and all God, was warned to save his life through a dream. God speaks through dreams. I shared this before. At age 20, I was struggling with direction for my life. What am I going to do with my life? I'm a teacher, graphic designer, business. Am I going to go into armed forces? Am I going to be a pastor? I didn't know. I remember I was seeking God with my heart. God, I just need you to speak to me. And I forget, at age 20, in a dream, God gave me a specific dream for my life that really called me into ministry. And the next 20 years of my life, in fact, what we're living out today, I can point back to a dream that God gave me as a 20-year-old struggling for direction in my life. God wants to speak to you in a dream, desperately wants to speak to you. Can we stand to our feet in person today as we get ready to close? I'm gonna ask you to close in a minute with a prayer. But I wanna remind you of our verse we started with today, Jeremiah 33, three. Let me read this again. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things. I wanna remind you, God has great things to tell you. In this room, people are navigating transition, even to retirement years. Navigating family and the normal things of life. And God has great things for you guys. There's young people in this room that are navigating careers and choices. Life isn't something to be feared, something to be excited about. He has great things to tell us. I don't know what you're going through today, but you need to know that God has great things. When you know that and you believe that, it'll drive you to your knees going, God, I need to hear from you. Because God's not trying to come down on you or crush you. He wants to get to you the great things and the plan. In order to line up with that, he might correct you. He definitely will encourage you. He'll challenge you to get you where you need to be so you don't miss the great things. He says, I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Today, here's the prayer I want us to lead us in today, at home and in person is I want this prayer, God, help me hear what you are saying. What, I'm going to ask you to think this question through in your mind. What do you need an answer from, from God? Is it with a relationship? Is it a financial decision? Maybe it's a, uh, a change of jobs. Maybe it's something with your spirit life. Maybe you're navigating tension internally or externally. I don't know what it is for you. But I want you to ask yourself this question. God, help me to hear what you are saying. At home, can you just close your eyes for a moment in person? Let's just close your eyes. If you're comfortable, would you just put your hands out in a posture of receiving? He says, call to me and I'll answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things. It's a, a command with a promise. Call to me and I will answer. Right now, 
We're not playing church. We need God to speak to us. As a church, we need God to speak to us. You as individuals today, in person and online, you need God to speak to you. Whatever season of life you're in, I know this, you have questions. And I know this, God has answers. Let's pray. God, help us hear what you are saying. God, we call to you today. God, we're asking that you would speak to us through people, through prayer, through your word, through dreams, through your Holy Spirit, through circumstances, through any way you want. God, would you speak to us today? God, we need direction of how to live this life. And we know that you have a great plan for us. You have great things in store for us. But God, we confess today we're easily distracted. We're easily discouraged. We're easily comforted by just callous things. God, we press in today and say, God, you have, where else can we go? You have the answers of life. You have the hope we need. You have things that we've never heard of, but we know they're great and they're true. So God, we're asking today, individually and collectively, you would speak to us. God, help us hear what you are saying. We love you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Speak, because we are eagerly listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church, we love you so much. Hope that encouraged you today. Next week, we're gonna talk about what does God sound like? What does his voice sound like? My, my voice might be lower than yours. Your voice might be lower than mine. I don't know, but there's a pitch and a tone and a personality. What does God actually sound like? Next week, we wanna unpack that and believe this week you're gonna hear from God. We'll see you in person, most of you, at 10 a.m., kids ministry, uh, and then 11.30, lots of room. Invite everybody. We're gonna have church next Sunday, and God's gonna be in our DM and you're going to be in the building. We love you so much. Have a great week.